Okay, so... I have the, the visual stylings of Brandon Syme and the audio stylings of Josh Wasaki. You can see his shadow. Let's get it! I'm your host, Grumpy Bumpy in the Night, and we're here to... We're here to do the thing. Brandon, tell him what the thing is. Fear Street. Sponsored by Baja La La Blast. Chinga Badinga. We're here to review Fear Street. This is Brandon's Summerween Collapse, and so now I can check this off my bucket list. I've done it. I don't gotta help anymore with his bullshit projects. Yeah. So we all know Summerween is just a premature clone of Halloween. Yes, indeed. So, guys, <laughs> Fear Street, it was a long movie. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about the intro first. Brandon, what'd you think of the intro? I thought it was great because, like, literally the first scene is a Fear Street reference. Yes! Yes, it was. Yeah, Josh? Yeah, it's just awesome. I love that. It was a great scene where he's like, great, this great book, mind you. And the lady's like, it's hey, for my stepdaughter. Step and I, I love that they reprinted Fear Street books and slapped Robert Lawrence on the front. Like, God, it is such a love yeah. letter to fans. Yeah. And that the killer was dressed up as the killer from Halloween night. Yeah. Most uh, face. Well, actually, no, because the killer, technically, if you think about it, is kind of more like the um, Halloween party or whatever it's called. Yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. Halloween night, too. Yeah. But there were so many, and I do mean so many. Like, they had so many references to so many different Fear Street books. It was great. Literally, I looked it up, and it's like 50 books they counted. Is this better for lighting? Yeah, yeah, it is. A full boy right there. That's Josh Wasaki, a aka Senpai Josh, the anime boss, the uh, the buster of anime coochie himself. Everyone, he has made it out of the shadows. Anyway, so as we were saying, Fierce Street had an amazing opening, and bloody. I mean, honestly, you know, granted they had intended this for an adult audience, but this was everything Goosebumps should have been. And I know everyone's probably said that multiple times, but my God, that's what we could have had, guys. So we could have had. It was great, and let's let's not forget though the entire time was I the only one thinking, wow, this soundtrack slaps. The, the licensed music, oh my! God. I know it's like, and they did not they did not play around. They had nothing but '90s hits. Like it felt like the '90s. 1994 was an amazing movie. Yeah. So I think one of the most amazing choices they could have done is setting a lesbian couple in the '90s because it. This is before the movement, guys. This is before it was okay to be out of the closet. Yeah. yeah. This might sound wrong, but it isn't. I really like the fact they don't shove it down your throat 24-7. Oh, they were shoving it down yeah. the throat all right. They were like, <laughs> like everyone got laid. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, they weren't, like, shoving, yeah, their gay relationship, but they weren't shoving it down your throat. Like, you need to like this. Like I definitely appreciated. They really captured the teenage angst, you know, going through the notions. I want to say the only thing I wasn't a huge fan of was how we really stumbled into the plot, like the knocking them off the road, and like, that was fine. But when Sam essentially stumbled out of the car and was like right on top of the witch's grave, here's my only complaint: if that witch is from 1666, I'm sure like over time the dirt and stuff would build up. It would not be right there. And a shallow grave, you know what I'm saying? Over time, and even so, I don't think bones last 300 years, but I, I could be wrong. My thing is, is like the whole football game scene was awesome. Like the whole shady side versus Sunnyvale or Sunnydale. That's Sunnydale. You know, like the whole idea that Sunnydale is just like, oh yeah, you could suck. You know, like they just. Yeah, I mean that's what the thing was, and then again, you got reference to the cheerleader. Yeah. yeah, I was like, oh my god, they got the cheerleaders reference, but I was like, well, where's my evil cheerleaders? What the heck? So let me ask you this. Who was your favorite character, Josh? Who was like little brother? Yeah? Yeah, he was good. It's all to you, witch nerd. How about you, Brandon? Yeah, what's his face? The one that gets killed by the meat grinder. Or not meat Kate? grinder, um... No, 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 the guy, the, uh, the one that gets the... Oh, uh, the druggy dude? Yeah. See, I loved how they essentially made reference to the babysitter with the cheerleader who got hit by the meat grinder. I really thought she was going to live. Like, I was upset that she died. Like, her and the boyfriend, like, they didn't have to die. I was like, 
But Sam I is that boy that's so right? I was literally, like, I watched this movie, and my, my parents were in bed when, when I finished this movie. So I'm watching this movie with, like, ten, like, on my volume bar, and I'm sitting there, and I sat there, like, like, pounding my bed, like, <laughs> like, trying not to just go, no, like, dang it. Yeah. It just sucked. Again, it was, it was a really interesting twist. I didn't, I wasn't sure where it was going at first. I really wasn't expecting it to be like The Witch. Like, I know a lot of Fear Street has paranormal aspects, but not every single Fear Street's all about paranormal, you know? Sometimes it's just about killers. So, I wasn't really sure, and I do like the way they went. I just don't like that we lost two of the main characters for Sam, and then in the end, Sam ended up being possessed. That really was like, what the fuck? That, okay, that I think is actually kind of a nice ending, because I was just like, the whole, the whole thing that they're like, Ooh, it's gonna be deadly. The way they ended, they f***ed my theory, because for the longest time I had a theory that that chick that her little brother was typing to, the Queen of Silence or whatever, or the Queen of Shush, I thought that was the cheerleader chick, and I thought that, and then they had the little scene where, and everyone was like, yeah, underdog, get a sworn that was her, like they were gonna hook up or whatever, and then she died, and I was like, well, there goes that theory. I mean, the whole thing for me about that is just... They really do a good job on making you really like characters in this movie. Well, not that we already kn didn't know there was a sequel and then a threequel after that for the triple feature, but they did a well, job yeah, on, like, making you like the characters or making you hate the character or whatever. Well, I guess what I was going to lead into essentially is they made a nice reference to the camp where like the cheerleaders like, oh yeah, my mom's sister went there, it messed our whole family up. So it's like they already alluded to it and built to it, which is great. You know, it didn't just go. By the way, here's camp. Boom. I'm excited to see where it goes. I think Josh, you said your favorite part was like, man, she was like freaking hot, but the bitch was crazy. Yeah, that, oh, that was hilarious. Also, our main character was insane. Dana straight up jacked a gun off a cop. It's like you crazy bitch. Bro, yeah, I was like, damn. I, dude, okay, that, that the whole, too. the whole, the whole scene with the evil, you know, lady in the in the middle of the road. When she shot her in the eye, like, the whole Ruby like, Lane. generation, like, regenerative yeah. eye, I'm like, oh my god, that's cool. Like, like, with that entire scene leading up to the, the hot bars, where she's like, she's, she's hot, but she's crazy, was, um, the part where you just stand there, she's singing her up, and she's, like, throwing in the corner, like, bro, come on, you know yeah. she's gonna look right. He was trying to score. Yeah. No, it had everything the movie needed. It was long. It had a decent plot. It didn't drag its feet too long. Hundreds of thousands of amazing references. I'm over exaggerating there. God, a nice demographic on the like color. It's very nineties for sure. Oh God, yeah, dude. That's what we wanted, though. No, I'm not. He was stealing internet from the neighbors. Steal it from the neighbors. Leave me alone. Could pay for yourself. I I also really like the uh, the whole scene with him playing Castlevania. Yeah. Yes. Like Castlevania bloodlines. Yes, that's fun. It was good, honestly. It was all really good. I don't feel like there's any really too loose change there, you know. And my thing is, is I really like that it was '90s enough that it wasn't like shoving '90s down your throat. Well, here's what I'm really interested in seeing. I'm really interested in seeing how the sheriff plays out in this next part, because remember he wrote a note to somebody that says it's happening again. Yeah. Yeah. So in 1994, okay, so that means 1994, Robert Gordon is Ariel's son, obviously. Right. Yeah. That means Goosebumps is already out. Okay. I don't know. Why are we talking about Goosebumps? This is Fear Street. We're talking about Fear Street. Also, what was the time gap? 78 or it's 94, that's like what? That's like 16 years? 16 years? Yeah, 20, 20 something. Nah, dude. 20 something years to put you at 98. Roll that back oh, four. It was 16 years. Interesting. So, a lot of these kids that had to deal with the stuff in 94 were born in around 78. Yeah. Maybe actually a little before that. I was born in 93, though. I was born in 97. I was born in 03, so. Boo! Sorry, someone was going to have to do it. Might as well have been me. All right, so guys, let's uh, let's not drag this on forever. What was your favorite scene, and then your favorite kill, starting with Josh? Favorite scene first, then favorite kill. Go. Favorite scene. Uh, let's see. I would have to say I really liked the ending scene with where she does the whole oh where where the main character is all 
just be like, oh yeah, the thing we, we, we say today, thanks, no thanks to you, you know, all like being sarcastic yeah. and things, thanks for your help. It's like, it's over now. It's like, it's never over. It's, yeah, why would it And then I'm like, wait, what? I think my favorite kill was the uh, meat grinder. That shit was fucking brutal. It was. All right, Brandon? Favorite scene is going to be intro. I just, I love that intro. It's awesome. And again, favorite kill is gotta be Meat Grinder. Do some, and it worked out perfectly for me. I'm gonna say, I'm probably with Brandon. My favorite scene was the intro, and I think my favorite kill was essentially also the intro, like when he like stabbed her down. Like that shit was just like it was like wow. I like him grabbing her and just like dragging her on the floor. It was made very clear right then and there where we were going with it, and it was so yeah. sad because like she tried, dude. She tried so hard to get away. And, like, even after he was shot, she was already stabbed. And, like, you could just see it. Like, after she already got stabbed, you knew she was f***ing. He got her back. Even if she survived, she would have spine damage. And yeah. she still begged. And it was just so sad. It's like, dude, she did not want to die. And it was so sad to me. I just thought of another scene that I absolutely sad. Knew. He was sad. The dude was fine, like, ten minutes before. Like, I he's, love- like, normal before that. And then immediately goes to killing you. Mm-hmm. I... Okay, so I just thought of another scene. I absolutely adored the scene when they they tried to have the monsters chase her, you know, because of the blood and stuff. Mm-hmm. And then they put them in the room, and then they light it on fire, yep. and all the creatures die. And then the whole like the the hand coming out of the the, the goo. goo that was awesome. Yeah. So was Fear awesome. Street was really good. If we were gonna rate Fear Street, what would you rate it, Josh? No ten. 1994 got a 9 out of 10 from Josh. Brandon. 9 out of 10. <sighs> Why are you guys always going to make me the asshole? <laughs> I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. It was good. That's, that's, I don't wait, think it was perfect. That bad. It's not, that's not like giving it a 4 out of 4. That's, that's not being an asshole. That's fair. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah, that's fair. That's a fair criticism. Uh, so it's nine. not like being like, hey guys, I'm giving it a 1. Because I don't like it. <laughs> 8.5 that ain't bad at all. Yeah. No. My, my thing is... is I That's funny. That's about how much you'd pay for a standard Fear Street book right now because the hype's up. It's about eight seventy five a book, if not higher. Let's say what we got to say about this. I know we're all excited to see 1978, but I'm not watching it till tomorrow because me and my roommates are watching it as a group. It's going to be a movie party. So, Josh, if you know it, don't say shit. Give us a day to talk about it. Do we have anything closing statements on this movie? Starting with Josh. Um... 1994 was awesome. Can't, uh, hope you can't wait for you guys to spend some videos with you on Halloween tomorrow. And that's it. We all watch our Fear Street, 1994. Brandon? Absolutely loved it. I really can't wait to see what they do on 1666, because that's going to be an interesting. Boy. That one looks dark, and I'm excited about it. Hey, who knows? If this goes well, maybe we'll get a ghost of Fear Street. Ooh. Yeah. All right, so yeah. I was very enthralled with the movie the entire time, even though I made some jokes during it, because that's just who I am. It was still really good, and I enjoyed it, and I was under my blanket half the time, but not because I was scared, just because I was comfy. So, yeah, with that being said, this has been The Boo Crew, The Season of the Glitch, The Boys at the Horror Burrito, The Spice. Yeah, look forward to Brandon's edition of this, because it's going to be a lot different than my edition of this, because we're doing one of those weird cross-edits, because we're cool. So... With that being said, ghouls and goblins, always remember, horror is a beautiful thing. Remember to consume more souls of living and keep those claws sharp. I have been your co-host, Bumps in the Night, and we are Audi McScouty. Uh, What's up, 90 style? Okay, so yeah, that was our review of Fear Street 1994, a.k.a. Part 1. If you enjoyed it, maybe you should check it out when we do Part 2. I know it's a bit late as 1978's already out now, and by the time we're watching this, We'll probably have all three already done. But hey, I'm working at my own pace because i got a lot of projects going on. With that being said, if you did like it, maybe consider clicking the like and subscribe button. And as always, remember, dear viewer, you never know what goes bump in the night. Yeah.